I went 12 yeah. years without seeing a homeless guy's dick. It took me seven minutes in Austin. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> I want to do a GoFundMe for whoever is running Toadie's Twitter. Well, I'm autistic, sir. For a solid two months, we were very questionable. <laughs> I'm dying. Hey everyone, first off, I just gotta say thank you from the bottom of all our hearts for uh, the amazing reception right now on the, the merch. This, this shirt, Full Metal Spectrum. The amount of support we have received for Autism Awareness Month has been amazing. Ah, thank you so much. This is near and dear to all of our hearts and, uh, and thankfully it's near and dear to all of you. You guys have, are just crushing it. I can't say thank you enough. We have the Full Metal Spectrum, we have the Spectrum Gunship, and we have the Tism Touch shirt up right now and all the proceeds. All the proceeds are going to uh, two different nonprofits. The first one is the National Autism Association. The second one is the Organization of Autism Research. Both of these nonprofits are amazing. They're not only doing research in the subject of autism, but they're helping the families that might need some support or cover down or even therapy and getting those kiddos or adults uh, the best life they can live. I can't wait to see how big this gets. We have already crushed our goal and I want to see, I want to set a freaking standard and show how amazing this community is. So from the bottom of all our hearts, thank you all so much. I am at a loss of words. So go buy a t-shirt. It all go, literally all of it goes towards an amazing cause and we are just super blessed to have you all around are you oh you're are you gonna do this every time now yeah oh really it's my new thing for my second podcast of the day yeah oh yeah i mean you started with the first podcast yeah, I did that doing with that. the first one too <laughs> that was the first podcast yeah we already did one today oh no shit yeah, yeah i'm going hard good We're luck buddy this. oh my god that's right i can crush in life it'll be a good one ready oh Th three two wait three two one <laughs> My boy. Hi, yeah. everyone. Welcome to the <laughs> Unsubscribe Podcast. I'm joined today by... I said it right that time. I know. I was gonna. We were going to... I was like, he nailed it. <laughs> not, know, a, not a billion people watching right now. He <laughs> fucking yes. boy nailed it. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that. <laughs> Cody, say the thing. <laughs> Eli Double Tap, Fat Electrician, Brandon Herrera, and, and our boy Cody Operator. Cody, Cody, Cody Holy shit. Cody, it's been a rough week, guys. I didn't really say that week. for four shows or something. Oh, yeah, no. we were just like, uh, all right, when we open damn. it up, we'll do this, this, this. Obviously, we'll we'll do the you know, the live shows that we did, which thank you guys all for coming out. That was a really good time. Y'all yeah. fucking it's rock. Fantastic. Thank you. If you, if you came to the, you know, say it in the comments, because we had a fucking blast. Well, we we're going to start out with, you know, cracking the can and everything, and then right after, have Cody open us up with the uh, the tip, the line. It's the line. It's saying the thing. Say it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. That didn't fucking happen, apparently. We I kept like, hold up, hold up. <laughs> like, uh, Cody, do you have something to say? Ha uh, ha. Hi. Hi. Something. You're like, I said it. No, we're all just like, no, dude. <laughs> and you sit down and you'd be like, okay, I got it. Today we're introducing it. <laughs> and the last one was my favorite because it was at the bar <laughs> two hours before the show. We're talking to Cody. Say, Cody. You got to get this one right, buddy. He's like, I know, I know. It's fucking, there's a lot of people. <laughs> He's like, I got it. I got it. He's like, okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. He, he sits down. Welcome to the unsubscribe podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we were all just like, God damn it. <laughs> but Cody, we stopped the whole show. <laughs> Bro, that was, that was so wild, though. I've never done a live audience thing before, and we sold out four fucking shows. That was fun. That was crazy. It's a good time. That was wild. It was a great time. It, it was went like, from it was a lot like skydiving. You hate it at first, and then you're like, "Oh, this is pretty fucking dope." Scary, but still pretty fucking dope. <laughs> it took until the second show where I'm like relaxed in the middle. I'm like, "Okay, I can I can do these. I think I like doing this." And by Dallas, I'm like, "Man, I'm sad this is over." It was a good time. It was a lot of and it was a lot of great people too. I think that I like it probably. Do that crowd interaction is my favorite yeah. part. Y'all are just weaponized autism to listen to you scream no matter what was being said. Bro, you want to know what my favorite part was? Which part? How many people came up afterwards? Because we had, we did the VIP thing afterwards, the meet and greet, where it was like 150 people. Every show, four sold out shows, they came up and they're like, hey dude, I just didn't waste myself because I love you guys and you helped me. There was a lot of amazing, and that was like. amount of that. It was cool. Yeah. Dude, everyone is like breaking down a little bit, which is, yeah. 
He was being super supportive of those people because they were they were being heartfelt. It's like, hey, man, I just want each one of us to be like, hey, thank you so much for what you guys are doing. And that's why we do it at the end of the day is like for moments like that. And I want a big shout out to King Trout for oh, <laughs> yelling yeah. at that. Yeah, he, he had to dad oh, a couple oh, kids God, there. Yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. That yeah, we, awesome. we, we had one dude come up and uh, he would a very heartfelt moment. He's like, hey, my dad died last year. Like, I'm really thankful for you guys. And there were like two teenagers in the back laughing at him because he like sh because that dude shed a tear a little bit. Yeah. And Trout was like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Or leave. So, yeah. 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 Like, do you want to enjoy out. VIP from the parking lot? Because that's what's about to happen. <laughs> and that's it's like being respectful. Bros, if any of us can cry, y'all can cry. It's quite all right. It's opening up feelings. Ain't gay. No, nah, never mind. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. you, you push it down, you be a man about it, and you die at 56 yeah. of a heart attack. It's like you, the Bill Burr bit. And you swallow a bullet like every normal veteran. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Just deep down, let it consume your heart. G Van. for Congress. <laughs> Fuck off. G Van, crop, crop his face over his body when he says that. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> South Park <laughs> face. <laughs> God. No, but that's, I mean, that's something, and that, that, that speaks to what we've said since day one on the podcast is like, look, this is the way that real dudes talk. And especially when it comes to like the veteran community and stuff like that, like they, they need shit like this. Cause like that sort of camaraderie that like feeling like you're hanging out with one of the boys and cracking the fucked up jokes and doing the stuff like that. That is a social faux pas today. Like that's what really helps these people. Yeah. And then it's also when there are an emotional response or anything, you'd be supportive of that. You show them, it's like, hey, you're being heard, you're being listened to, and we love you. Especially that's what this community's for. Yeah. Like everyone's nailing it across the board here at this table. And I mean, dude, if I can just, if I can, if I can jerk these dudes off oh, real God. quick. Again? <laughs> Everyone <laughs> covered down so fucking hard. You guys, cr like, we were all, going into it, it was very, like, doubtful because it is, it is chestnut checkers. It is very stressful, and we could, like, it's doing other things, but, like, getting out of that comfort zone, which we discussed, which is million people behind a camera, too easy. 500 people in front of, then you're like, oh, hey, what's up, guys? Woo, that's a lot of you motherfuckers. I agree, <laughs> one. Well, because I can, I can bomb in front of a camera, feel nothing about it, and then my editor can clean it up. You bomb in front of a live audience, you're fucked, dude. They, yeah. You get one shot. But, like... I don't know. It's really hard to bomb in front of the audience that only came there for you. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like open mic night where we have to like win them over. Everybody there already knows all the inside jokes. I think it just took us a couple shows to figure that out. And yeah. then <clears throat> everyone just, and then it was like each one just covered down. Like Cody's like, that was your big, that is your biggest fear. You're like this fucking, if you're not a public speaker, you're very open about that. You're like, ha. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for, show, <laughs> for a show, Cody, <laughs> Cody's like, you nervous? I was like, I mean, a little bit. How are you? He's like, I'm dying. <laughs> 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 and then Rich ran out there in a kilt and mooned the entire audience to open oh, up. Yeah, so that kind of broke the ice. This yeah. kind of shows ass to everyone. <laughs> Showing his ass <sighs> is nothing new. <laughs> that happened. Yeah, everyone just covered down. I was like, oh, my boys are so proud. Fucking Brandon just killed it up there. Fucking Nick that crushing was it with stories. Dude, everyone yes. just like everyone had their jokes no one was stepping on each other. Episode four, like that fourth one, just yeah. that was perfection. And now we will be doing in fall two to three more on a bigger yeah. venues because we know who we're bringing. We know how to do the sets now. We learned really quickly. And then we had a fucking blast because that hour and a half time. went. Yeah, that, that was quick. Dude, that last one, I had to stop it yeah. early. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one went, we could have went longer on that one. That was having fun. I kind of wanted to almost. Like, yeah, that's what I was saying toward the end. It's like, man, I'm like, I, I'm not ready to be done with this yet, man. I know the first the first show, we were all kind of feeling it. Some more than others, but. Yeah. I don't know. Having Meat Canyon out there was the funnest shit oh, ever. Dude, Papa Meat, when he got that buzz go, <laughs> Like, yeah. he was like, he was, he was so getting in the funny. flow. And then the buzz hit. And then he's like, want to hear my dad? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we didn't tell that. God, well, they, don't, they don't, don't know about it. No. So, yeah, we didn't record many of the shows. <laughs> Did we record any no. of them? No. no. This, that's yeah, an so, excuse, so, exclusive live content. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Meat came out there and he called his, or he, he played a voicemail by his dad. Or it was a voice memo. Like, he was yeah. there in person. That was a voice he said, memo. He said his dad's so funny that when... <laughs> 
He said that his dad's kind of an alcoholic, but he's so funny that whenever he interacts with him, he records everything. And he has this vi- the video of his dad telling a story, and it's fucking hysterical. This is, this is like post his mom just getting out of surgery or something. Meets mom. They're divorced. Dad's <laughs> visiting in the hospital or at the home while she's recovering. And then the dad is <laughs> just talking about like them titties <laughs> and the 28 year old titties. <laughs> talking about like getting flashed by some chick somewhere or. I don't know. Like, yeah, and I, his dad's I, voice is just pure redneck. The most it redneck sounds like voice you can it, imagine. Yeah. His, his dad's voice sounds like him doing a voice impression like he would do in one of his tunes. But just playing that directly into the microphone for all of us. My God. Dude, the audience was dying during that. Just dying, and then, dude, superpowers. That's I love. We ended it always with, with just audience interaction of like, "Hey, we're doing the offenders." Yeah, three out of the four shows, it was rich, angry cops going through the audience, just getting Insulting people superpower. People. Yeah, really. Yeah, he was just roasting all of you, but getting the the superpowers from the audience, and then we had to all pick the offset. Oh, that was good. That was a good time. No, it was fun. That was I could we couldn't ask for a better time. And then uh, the hangovers each and every night. I was fine the entire time. That was weird. I was surprised. You guys uh, even on the last show they went to eat. I took a forty five minute nap, just old manning it up. Shows like, hey, we're going there. I was like, I'm gonna sleep. Actually, we filmed a podcast earlier with a habitual wine crosser and. Uh, demo. Demo. Oh no shit. And I, we were talking about that show with them, and I said that Eli was. Literally like Gandalf leading the three hobbits, desperately trying to get us to do the right thing all the time. But the, the hobbits are alcoholics. And I'm looking around like, where the fuck is Brandon and Cody? You said Cody had the ring? You said, Shit. You, said, you said Brandon and Cody to Mordor with just a loaf of bread in the ring? Jesus Christ. And a bottle of whiskey? No, no, like, no. Wait, hold on. Where, where the fuck are they? Google Maps, closest, closest bar. I've got a yeah. good idea. Not trying dragon. to brag. We were the last ones to board the plane on Southwest every flight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck you, Eli. No. Southwest. Jesus fuck Christ. Fuck Southwest, you guys. Dude. You guys forced me to go into a bar and be the last one to board. I get to walk down a full flight like it's the Isle of Shame, just being the world's <laughs> biggest shitty lottery ticket. Just everybody with a middle seat open is like, fuck, do I got to sit next to the hairy guy that's 260 pounds <laughs> the in the middle? Guy. Just let me rub my hairy triceps on <laughs> yeah, his you can you can feel my tricep hair or you can get sweat on you those are the two <laughs> options i tried to pick the safest one you had to go into a bar and hang out with us oh i see yeah i mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god speaking of the bar was fun after after the last night oh jesus oh god Wait, re- real quick that fucking person i said those two that mm. oh the dude mm. the oh god Bro, I had, hear it too. Out there, I had to hear it too. Learn to read <laughs> body language. If a dude is like this, well, you're talking means he doesn't want to listen. Anymore. I I pulled my hat Eli, down. <laughs> Eli was. I looked over because I the, the conversation was so <laughs> fucking stupid that Eli was li- like this in the chair. And I could just, the only thing moving was his finger as I could see him scrolling on his phone as he was <laughs> pretending like he was asleep the rest yeah. of the time. It was fucking hilarious. What, what was one of the lines this guy said? Uh, I don't, this dude, first of all, this guy was like 58 years old, not in anything, any kind of shape other than round. And <laughs> he was explaining to the other dude that also wasn't in shape next across to him. The- across the aisle, loud enough for me to hear it two rows up about how he knows how to kill a man 19 different ways and slid him from stem to stern. And stem... Yeah, he's a boat. He's a boat. Just don't don't pay attention to it. And then the (laughs) other guy would be like, I have a nine millimeter. It identifies as a hole puncher. puncher. I was like... (gasps) What's funny is that stuff like that is hilarious to people who aren't in our industry. People that haven't seen the meme 8,000 times. Yeah. I remember being like 14 and thinking those bumper stickers like, I got a 45 because... They don't make a 46. Like, first of all, motherfucker, yes, they do. Second of all, that is Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like autism, Brandon. Comes. Yeah, first yeah. off, that's factually yes, incorrect. Second. Yeah. Hey, it's my autism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. The bar on the last night. Oh, no, that was just amazing. Oh, dude, Hunter oh, Brandon, cuts it up. <laughs> Brandon oh, played the, the Dune Sardaukar chant. 
But the but the DJ so so you know the hamburger cheeseburger like <laughs> the Mongolian throat singing. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Brandon played that for me. Thank you. Because yeah, because last time when we were in Salt Lake, we did we told the story of the podcast. But you paid yeah. a DJ like an absurd amount, like a thousand dollars or some shit to play yeah, fucking like starter car, starter car chant. How I know drunk my friends are. They'll do it for ten dollars. Oh, yeah. They walk over and like, I had to pay. You didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't I didn't pull a Cody necessarily, but I definitely overpaid. <laughs> but the, the dude started mixing it up too. The DJ, he was awesome. Oh yeah. We had the starter car chant going. He's like, and burger cheeseburger. <laughs> and he's like, mixing it into like limp biscuit. It was hilarious. Oh yeah, no, legitimately. It was awesome. But I, uh yeah, we, we had a meat canyon out there and meat canyon, he was just all night, he was just like Dude, he was dancing his ass off. It was impressive. Town. Dude, homeboy loves to cut up that dance floor. You got out there. Like, he's just out there like, mm, mm, mm. I was like, oh, Hunter fucking dance. He's one of the few guys I've ever seen. It's like, I just want to dance. Fuck these bitches. It, I need to get away. I want to just a shit. day with my boys. Because there were no females <laughs> no. out there. It no. was a, so this was a dive bar across the street from the venue that we sold out. At even, one in the morning. Even worse, <laughs> it was a dive bar right next to a sold out unsub venue. There were no women inside. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my and god. Then, and then Hunter like just stormed out. I had to go chase him down and follow him, make sure everything was Did okay. You see us all get yeah. up when he yeah. started walking and out. All of us all got him. I was like, I got yeah. it. We're just <laughs> concerned <laughs> friends. Like, yeah. oh shit, where's he going? Me Where and Hunter walked like two blocks down to the gas station. I was like, Hunter, what are we doing? He's like, I had to get 200 bucks for the DJ. I told him I'd give him 200 bucks if he played Lint Biscuit. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I was, I was, uh, dude, I was texting Heather at the time and I was like, Nick and Hunter just went on an adventure. (laughs) It went okay. We we got it taken care of. (laughs) DJ got paid. Oh, Oh, we got to sign a baby. I mean, Reddit knows about that. His name was William. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, little Will. Young Billiam. Billiam. Yeah. 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 Young Billiam. The first time we've signed a baby. For real? (laughs) That was the chillest baby on the planet though. He... Dude, he was... Uh, he didn't cry once. I don't know why you brought your baby to our show. Thank but you, though, for yeah, the Yeah, thank you so much. It was but still kind of weird. Awesome. But yes, yeah, so he but didn't <laughs> cry one time. That was the most... Even during like us handling the baby, holding the baby up for a sacrifice, like nothing. No, like and standing through that entire... <laughs> like They were at the very end almost of the VIP line. Yeah. Like that was a long time. They were there until one in the morning. Yeah, it probably took us two hours to get through the VIP line at, yeah. at that place. So like... That was a long time for a baby not to flip the fuck out. Yeah. That was fine. Dude. We brought no. it up mid podcast and the parents held him up and the crowd <laughs> erupted at the, that was our biggest video. That was 500 yeah, people that, 500 that cheered people. for this baby. And he's just like 500, yeah. Yeah. 500 three months old, drunk people, 500 drunk people. We broke the record for that venue. We saw uh, their alcohol sales that night. Right. I think that's what the owner said. I don't we yeah. broke Considering the they brew Chris. alcohol yeah. there, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. We broke the yeah. record on alcohol sell in a single. Now you, that's this community right here. <laughs> that's what we try to tell the venues. It's like, no, we should probably get a cut of the, the alcohol sales. Why? Because our crowd fucking. I know how much they're gonna drink. <laughs> <laughs> we need in on this action. <laughs> but they, it was just fuck, just a good ass time. Like yeah, each so we owe it all to Young Billiam. <laughs> young Billiam, he we did it for him. <laughs> this was to you, Young Billiam. To you, Young Billiam. Dude, Chris and Wes also. You can tell they're used to being on the stage. Oh God, the magicians. Oh, the magicians. Yeah, they had such good beats. I was like, oh, okay, taking notes. Huh? We gotta ask this come question more often. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dude, oh um, <laughs> old crusty Wes, sheets. Wes, dude, Wes took his fucking clothes off. Yeah. And he was the most nervous one. Yeah. And he basically gets naked in the first five minutes. I'm like, yeah. oh, well, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have pegged that one. But yeah. all right. It's fine. Dude, but like they just, they're, those cards make me look like an idiot. <laughs> what's a, what's a, what do you call it? Something, see if you're a retarded. No, a retarded test. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those cards is like if you. Oh, no, it's are you smarter than a retard? <laughs> yeah. It was based off of how close they held the card. It changed the word. So when you're trying to sound out words, you're not sure. And then you hand, hold it out to the crowd and they can read it plain as day. <laughs> I tried to, I tried to boop Tim Kennedy failed miserably. He wasn't buying it. 
No, he just had locked eyes with you. I know. Oh, yeah, we right. totally... And then, and then, oh, he, God, and then he picked up the happened. mic stand shit. like he was going to hit me. I'm like, shit. <laughs> For the second time that night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, we, we had Tim Kennedy in the audience, and we just brought him up on stage. That was awesome. You tried to boob him? I didn't oh, see yeah. it. Oh, I yeah. tried hard. <laughs> He's like, here. He, you know who else I tried to boob? Who? Meat Canyon. <laughs> Successfully. Successfully. No! No! <laughs> Great reaction to it. I uh, want it redacted from the record. <laughs> that was yeah. one of my favorite boobs. <laughs> he was so disappointed in himself. <laughs> I can just hear G-Van's edit when it happens in real time now with the fucking GTA wasted shit. <laughs> I know, as oh. G-Van watches us from the corner. I know, G-Van's here. We got a boy. And, uh, and Jake, the lawyer. And oh hey, also thank you for all the, the like you guys sold out of all our merch. Oh yeah, that's fucking crazy. Thanks guys. And that sure you no one else will see what shirt unless you went to the live show. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, like everyone's in town this weekend because we got the range day coming up soon. Oh and god, yeah. So yeah. our editor is watching us just hating himself right now. Yeah. Well, what nobody said <laughs> yet, so that's. <laughs> <you know. laughs> <laughs> and now he has to bleep with a black bar. <laughs> but put yeah. Tony's face yeah, over. Just, just put Tony's face <laughs> over. Yeah, it. Tony's face. <laughs> Every time it cuts to that, oh god, Jesus Christ! <laughs> no, <laughs> the AI will see the word really clear as day. Be like, well, okay, flagging this was like, no, yeah, no, no, definitely don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> we still have to bleep it, but yeah, also we got one of the best bits, which is. When you ask the audience to scream. Oh God, I had <laughs> <laughs> there is a video of five hundred motherfuckers in Houston, uh, all because we were doing like shout outs to friends, family, you know, different stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Just like a little little bit of like, you know, audience participation, just like being really cool for for our loved ones and stuff like that. But at the very end, we did like three in a row, like all different ones from us. And I'm like, I bet I can get five hundred of these motherfuckers to say fuck Tony. <laughs> And sure as shit, super it, loud. It was electric. <laughs> Five and five hundred people is deafening. <laughs> yeah, yes, because I was like, "All right, say hello, Heather," and yeah, and then Caleb's like, "Say hello, stupid bitch." Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Say fuck, Tony." <laughs> it uh, they did that. Yeah, that happened. <sighs> yeah, that's uh, oh, that was funny. Well, it's funny because everybody uh. Everybody kind of in our audience knows what I'm doing right now. So that's everybody was kind of in on the joke. They understood. They understood the assignment. It was definitely our audience at each one of those things. Have you yes. done live stuff before, Eli? Other than that one thing we did uh, at the Veteran Awareness. Uh, that's, yeah. that's your first live mm -hmm. anything? The, no the, shit. The sewer slide panel? Yeah, sewer slide panel was the first one. And that was number <laughs> two. That was, that was my first one, dude. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Fine. Well, no, super slide was your first. Me? Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've never we're... done public speaking things. I've done dog and ponies <laughs> for like the police department before, but I've never done like speaking events. I want to say something, but we'd have to cut it. <laughs> say it. Say it. I was Just gonna say, say you're a uh, you're four for five for saying <laughs> your life. <laughs> 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 That's it's so That's true. technically very true. I know you are sitting over here like you fucking asshole. And one of them's an unsub episode, <laughs> not a veteran's panel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guess which one he didn't say that. Oh, the veteran's are wrong. You would be wrong. <laughs> you what is it? The Veggie Tales? Oh, you'd think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> I think we can keep that. That's all right, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just bleep it out. They'll know what I said. <laughs> they can find out. It's still there. Oh, man. No, uh -oh. I, I dropped an F-bomb. I dropped, I dropped an R-bomb. <laughs> it's okay, though. It's okay, guys. Do you see how if you're not a sensitive little fucking pussy, you can say words and it doesn't offend people? Do I just yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> A certain certain words. Certain certain. <laughs> I think context a, matter too. <laughs> that's my thing. Context matters. Yeah, context really matters. There's a difference between joking around with friends and you know, a literal hate crime. Yeah, dude. Like fucking. Yeah, if you fucking live in, <laughs> like if you live in fucking London, yes. 
what? <laughs> I don't oh, know he's talking about cigarettes. Oh. Yeah. Well, I, I got, I got Cody's. I got yeah. you. Dude, right. even uh, one of my favorite ones is just the Ching Lee. And you were like, well, oh, no. I can't say his actual C name that he went by. <laughs> White man. Brandon's like. <laughs> well, would you say that uh, you not saying that word is kind of the chink in your armor? <laughs> And then what did you say? You you said it's like you know. I thought I said that. That was a different show that I said that. Oh yeah, I you were the, the last. One. I stole his line yeah. on the fourth show. <laughs> that was because I was in such a great. a great show. We, we went hard <laughs> on the live shows. It was it was yeah. Fun. Dude, the community just had a blast. Ah, oh! the only time they didn't it was the the wait staff uh, in Austin. Probably not our biggest fans when we were done. No, yeah, that they mm. were com- weird. <laughs> Weird. I don't like them or their city, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, fuck that, dude. It's you remember walking in the back door and it just smelled like piss the whole time. It was fucking I fucking hate dude, Austin, I'm, dude. I, it was I'm, the only place that had homeless people outside the venue. Dude, <laughs> it felt like the fucking scene from uh, Black Hawk Down. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah like, oh my the god. Crowds yes. of people down the alleys were just coming toward us when we were done. Like just we the, were the driving down in Humvee. Brandon was fucking on the M2 blasting homeless people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting asked when you move into Texas. I was like, I was, I was considering it, and then I went to Austin, and now I'm considering it significantly less. Understandable. Have a nice day. There. Yeah, like, you, you fucking, you got to visit Los Angeles, Texas, there for a minute, I, dude, and then Atlanta, Texas. I went 12 yeah. years without seeing a homeless guy's dick. It took me seven minutes in Austin. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. Seven minutes, and then the venue's like manager comes out because I'm drinking a vodka Red Bull as I'm. Trying to like mean because you mean you went out. We were like yeah, trying to shake yep. hands and say hi to everybody before the show as they're standing outside in line. We're just trying to like be friendly and make sure everybody gets to you know whatever. Be cool. And this guy comes out like you can't you can't have your drinks outside here. It's like dude, there's literally a homeless guy giving another homeless guy a hand job right there across the street. Yeah, we looked. I over feel like I can see, have a vodka Red Bull outside. Like they, it's fine. There are people smoking pot and fucking shooting up in the alleys. Yeah. everywhere around. It's like this no, not should, the issue. I, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I, I just had a beer, and they're like, "No, can't go outside." Like, sorry, we sold out your fucking venue. But, you Our know, bad guys. I looked across the street, and I was like, "I did a shooting breakdown right there. A guy got shot thirty six times." God, that is insane. Out of all fucking well, the worst four part venues. was Cody was like, "Yeah, it was last weekend." I was like, Jesus. "Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't have a gun was, on me because I flew fucking, here." Yeah, that was like <laughs> two weeks ago. Four venues. Austin, the only one that had that. Yeah. Well, it's like, weird oh. because it was Sixth Street, and like like Sixth Street is the party street there in in Austin. It's it's a shithole, which made it so much worse because like we got out and I was like, is it, are we like in the really bad part of Austin? Because it looked like yeah. we were in the really like there were tents up, there were people sleeping on the street, there That's were people the main, doing drugs, main there were homeless street. dicks. And That's kind of like, like the party street. No, this yeah. is a main party street, and I was like, oh, this is not good. Yeah, this is like if you know Nashville or something, it's Broadway Street or like the Vegas Strip. Like that's where everybody goes to fucking hang out and drink. Just And yeah. I've been to a lot of big cities since like doing the whole YouTube thing. Austin, by far the worst. Yeah. Not even close. Wait till you visit LA. Like. Yeah, oh, LA is dude, fucking uh, wild. That was, that was. I won't go. I've turned down TV networks because they wanted me to go film in California. I'm not. I know. I just saw saw Jake. (laughs) Jake, like Hunter Street, bruh, bruh. That not going. (laughs) It just smells like hobo urine the second you open that door. And it was it like the other week or two weeks ago. You had somebody like running with a gun into another. An armed robbery oh, whoa, whoa, in California did, did with just, the gun laws they have. <laughs> did you just say casual? Some guns and they committed an armed robbery on our street. It's in a blog on our on our website. Christ, <laughs> man, that's crazy. Corridor. They all moved to fucking Austin, <laughs> and I'm doing shooting breakdowns of like at the venue across the street where a dude got shot 36 times two weeks you ago. You know. I did, I did get a hand job in an Three dollars. <laughs> that was <Yeah>. Jake. <laughs> yeah, we looked over. Those two homeless guys are giving HJs. Jake looks over and waves. Oh, that one homeless guy is giving. <laughs> Our homeless attorney. <laughs> yeah, we had a fucking. He wasn't homeless before he started being unsubs attorney. <laughs> but now he has a real job. <laughs> and you're swamped. 
Uh, yeah. Eli, wake up! Huh? I know that the ghost bed pillow is super comfortable and has cooling technology, but we're shooting an ad right now. You mean this ghost bed pillow? That With one! Cooling technology? Cooling technology? It's hot in Texas, but that's cool. Eli, I know you're cooler than the backside of a pillow, but with Ghost Bed, you don't have to turn the pillow over. It has cooling technology. Every mattress has a 20 year warranty. Some even have 25. And you can try it out for 101 nights. If you don't like it, you can send it back. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. I have hard feelings for Ghost Bed. I have a hard feeling for you. I'm really hard. <laughs> The pillows have cooling technology. And so do the mattresses. The mattresses do too. <gasps> hey, Cody, did you know GhostBed also offers bundles? Bundles? You get everything you need. Just choose from your four mattresses and pick your bundle. So whether you need a mattress and a frame, or you just want to choose it all, like their cooling pillows and sheets, you can get the best bang for your buck. Right now, GhostBed is offering 50% off everything. If you use the code unsubscribe, click the link in the description or go to ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe. That's right, ghostbed.com slash unsubscribe and get 50% off right now. And now we're about to go into range day without these breaks. We are literally, yesterday was our travel day back home. This is Monday. And then we already did two podcasts today, mm -hmm. another podcast tomorrow, which we're actually looking forward I'm to. So with Grandpa that Gaming. one. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Super fucking awesome. super stoked for that one. And then Range Day on the twenty eighth, which that's your guys's fucking cup of tea because we uh, staggered this poorly as far as mental health breaks. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, we went right into this shit, dude. Fuck yeah. me. But we'll make four, it. What, four live shows in like a week. Mm -hmm. And now we're going right into range day. Four <laughs> live shows, three podcasts into range day. Yeah. On top of all the political events I have to do, uh, which I believe is 29 next month. Uh, 29 and what, 20 days? Yeah. <laughs> But but we support mental health, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just <laughs> we, for for thee and not for me, <laughs> not ours. <laughs> yeah, we push ourselves to the limit. No, nah, seriously. As much as we bitch about it, dude, it's the best job I ever had. Best job I ever had. Which hopefully <laughs> that shirt's out, but <laughs> I'll make that's that really shirt. shirt. Yeah, we're, we're doing that. It's that in full full spectrum or yeah, full metal full spectrum. metal spectrum. Oh yeah, that's... I remade the. Uh, the full metal jacket and cover art, except the helmet says born to math and it's got a puzzle piece instead of a peace <laughs> sign. And I, then it's I got, it's that. got a train and some crayons <laughs> in the headband instead of bullets, and a, <laughs> yeah, instead of bullets in a playing card. <laughs> so. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> what, the what do you mean by that soldier? <laughs> well, I'm autistic, sir. <laughs> Duality of man, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the duality of the spectrum, sir. Yeah. How many people have we got going to the range day? Mm, good 200 this time 200 guests yeah not including the vendors and the tac p dudes and everything yeah. the rso's everyone knows this time don't bring like 80 people yeah no 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 oh, we, we made it pretty yeah we made it pretty out there that you shouldn't bring fucking your entire crew of 10 people but um yeah. yo shout out to time for pie because uh jared taylor he brings out a bunch of tac p guys to be our range safety officers so Check out Time for Pie. Which is super helpful. Really helpful. To do. Like, really helpful. That's why last range day, even though we had so many people out there, so many vendors, like literally dozens of full autos, crazy belt fed shit, Barrett's, nobody felt unsafe. Because no. those Tac P dudes had it in line. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of SOF dudes sitting behind everyone. And Make, that, that was fucking also, awesome. Also, your crew, though, is out there just as oh, much yeah. helping them because... Your, your guys are nuts because it's like there's all these exotic machine guns spanning from World War One to like, I'm pretty sure, 30 years in the future. And you could just walk and be like, been around guns for a long time. I have no idea how to function this properly. I'm like, no problem. And they like they're like, never once have I ever been able to throw any of them off. They know exactly no. how to do it with their eyes closed. Well, they built <laughs> half of them. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, they're <laughs> autistic. <laughs> it, <laughs> They got it. They're definitely <laughs> spurgy. They got it. I love your boys. They're just most spurgy but dudes. <laughs> those are the dudes you want. Like I've said it before, like on the Nerd Rotic podcast. It's like, you know, you you want those dudes that that is their fucking tism. They're going to do it right every fucking time. And if they don't, it's there's no such thing as good enough. They're going to fucking do it right. I would always hire, like, if that's... I, it, 
I would hire it. Fucking if it, even if you couldn't speak, they're like, well, I'm a nonverbal autistic dude, but I'm really good at fucking VFX and sound design. I'm like, dope. I don't need you to speak. <laughs> Show me what you can do, bro. He'd be like, here, here's an alien. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, this is dope. <laughs> here's an alien wear and a speaking spell. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but he can only speak on action sketch really slowly. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to streamline this, but uh, <laughs> we're going to build a pipeline for this, bro. We got to make it work. <laughs> Jesus. Bro, I just want to say shout out to my son, too, for the last range day. He was out there oh, yeah. teaching grown men how to handle machine guns, so fucking which funny. was really cool. <laughs> Proud dad moment there. Dude, Your kid cracks me up. He's like, first off. It's fucking brass to grass, you dumbass. <laughs> John's just smoking. You're looking like a 40-year-old man, like, all right, well, here's how you load a dipshit. <laughs> John slaps a grown man, and he's like, no, no, this way. Muzzle downrange. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I can't wait till he comes on the podcast. <laughs> He's oh, almost of age. That would oh, be man. a fun podcast. Four wow. years from now, if we're still allowed to do this. How old is John? He's 14. His 21st birthday is going to be fucking dope. Well, the, we, we've, <laughs> we've talked eight. about we're all going to write novels. We've talked about my seven retarded uncles. <laughs> John, Yeah, that's going to be John's his autobiography. Yeah, his tell all book. It's going to be like my seven retarded uncles. Deep <laughs> sigh <laughs> in quotation. Yeah. It's just, so uh, this is the first book that's ever been marketed by someone who wasn't the author for a decade prior. <laughs> oh, I for, we have fucking I forgot you guys you met you met my my dad. My oh yeah. Family. yeah dude. Oh god. Your dad is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Because your dad didn't know what you like he, he's just kind of like in the blank. It's, it's like my father also. It's like what you doing on the Facebook, son? You know, <laughs> and then yeah, your dad came out and just got to see the live show for the first time. Dude, opening <laughs> that door, it's like opening the door. I'm like, ah, run out because those like the second we'd walk outside, it would just be like screaming. Yeah, fucking surreal. I felt like a Jonas brother. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd run out. I was like, dad, da, 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 da. gave hugs, and they're like, ah. I was like, this is my dad, and they're like, ah. And then I think I threw G-Van. I forget why I threw G-Van out there. It was like a grenade, though, because G-Van just got here. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. I was like, G-Van, come here. He's like, what? And I opened it. I was like, this is our editor, G-Van, close to it. I just heard it <laughs> screaming at oh, the door yeah, shut. Right. <laughs> oh, at the VIP? Yeah. That was funny as shit. <laughs> Sorry, G-Van. I, I was ready for anything. Your dad still threw me off. It was hilarious. Dude, he's just like this. Your dad looks like a kung fu master. Except he was wearing like long john thermal <laughs> long sleeve shirt with the sleeves worn. rolled up, and then he had a, a sleeveless Harley Davidson shirt over the top, <laughs> boot cut Wranglers, and like biker boots. And he had, he he had, he had the braided beard. He had a too. braided beard that looked dope. <laughs> oh, I was awesome. to call him L Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> he either knows kung fu or how to build a house. Gandalf. <laughs> L. Gandalf the Gray. His staff's just a fucking two by four. Yeah. L. Gandalf the Brown. That two by four. <laughs> See? Well, because before this, you're like, yeah, my dad's been doing construction his whole life. He could build anything. And I was like, I don't know. And then you see him and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. He was so nice. I was like, this guy's already fucking awesome. He's just smiling the entire time, like confused at what was going on. Yeah. And then we open up the fourth show in Dallas. Your dad in the audience, no clue what's going on. And we open up with a solid eight minute conversation about cum. Yeah. <laughs> Me being like, who out there masturbates? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> Proud dad moment. <laughs> he's like, now after after the show's done, he's like, well, son. I'm very proud of you, but I still don't know what you do. <laughs> I don't understand. really don't have any idea now. This didn't help. <laughs> I think I have more questions. Are you okay, pops? <laughs> I'm going right. to make it. I'll survive, dad. Your family is fucking awesome, man. They're so supportive. <laughs> that's, that's actually the first time that we met Eli's family. Yeah. They were, dude, the next day when we were walking to the airport, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's my sister. She's 54. They're like, what? Because my have, sister, you have, good, you have good genes, my boy. Chas looks fucking 
like they thought she was my age. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, it was like, huh? Yeah. It was like, she's, she's like 33, 34, right? 54. 54. Yeah. Just aging very well for her. Just yeah. Good age. job, yeah. Eli. You're going to fucking age I like that too. Of this. You guys will make me not age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drinking with my sure, boys. Pretty it's sure I already look older than you, and I'm the second youngest one here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a good time. I'm, I, dude, fall, if we're going to 100% do it again. Oh, God. Yeah. That was, that was that fun. Was, that and, was, a, that was addictive. And you know what? Everybody who didn't come to the live show really missed out. You know, <laughs> so if you have FOMO, I wouldn't fucking do it again. Dude, and we'll do an <laughs> East Coast one. A South uh, Texas. I'm just throwing one. it out there. Midwest has the most votes on Twitter and Instagram right now. When Where you guys it? put up the poll, yeah, but none of you. You don't have a fucking city big enough. Yeah, we do. Where? Where? I'll, take, I'll take you guys to the surf ballroom in Clear Lake. It's like this. Wow, super, there's like thirty a, three people in that venue. No, you bro. have to take a fucking surf sled ballroom, dogs. Surf ballroom is <laughs> actually legitimately <laughs> famous, and like a ton of people are performed there because it's a. Uh, it's the last place that Buddy Holly performed before his plane crashed. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. so he died super 100 famous. years ago. <laughs> I swear <laughs> to God, I, I, my, my brain autocorrected that to Bud Dwyer. No. no the big, <laughs> no, the big the actually, the famous performance. <laughs> yeah. What, the good old Bud Dwyer nosebleed? Yeah, we talked about him. Oh, yeah, I forgot we did talk about God, we talked about a lot of stuff on, yeah, that, we on the live show. show or? Yeah, we talked yeah. about that yeah. on the live show. Yeah, I was Bud like, Dwyer. Because we were talking about like the, the most fucked up shit you've seen on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah, that that broke my chair. Even fucking <laughs> Bud Dwyer doing the boot, pop himself on live TV. Because I told the story about how he was basically like because he got caught embezzling or something like that. So he was, you know, becoming a good politician. And uh, oh God, still back when now. there was back when there was <laughs> still honor, you know, shame and things like that when you fuck up and you corrupt. But like he uh, he tried to be a good person, and scheduled a press conference where only he knew he was gonna you know, you know punch his ticket. But he was uh, just <laughs> moving around the words. <laughs> yeah, right. But he um, he he called the pre uh, press conference like during when kids would be in school, so he wouldn't accidentally traumatize an entire generation. Back when there was like two channels, right? Only fucked up problem was it was a snow day. <laughs> kids were home that day. So yep. yeah, all the <sighs> kids saw it. I don't know. I watched it on <laughs> Rotten dot com. <laughs> God, I forgot about that. Yeah, we had some good old talking points during the podcast. Everyone had a, a blast of a time. Or oh. lack thereof. Boom! The year's 2024. Do you know what that means? A new look for you. Manscaped has the 5.0 Lawnmower Ultra. That's right, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is a man's cheat code to looking good, feeling good, and have all the confidence. Whether you're looking to maintain a trim or make sure everything's gone, this has you covered. Trusted by 10 million men worldwide. I actually use this. I endorse this. I use all their products. Equipped with two skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little bit off the top, and a new foil blade to take everything off comfortably. And for the dudes out there that want a full grooming experience, look no further than Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0. In that grooming kit, you get the trusted lawnmower, Manscaped's ears and nose hair trimmers, and essential aftercare products with the Crop Soother, Ball Aftershave Lotion, and Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. Head over to manscaped.com and use code UNSUB and get yourself 20% off and free shipping. Oh, I love free shipping. Make your balls and your spouse happy. What are like, you guys um, moving into uh, the fucking back to the range day? Who's the guest you're looking forward to? to is there any new names coming out to this one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. There's a there's a lot of UFC fighters coming out. Wait, no shit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, dude, I was wanting to get Strickland out, but Strickland hasn't answered us. But there's a lot of UFC fighters coming out. Because Sean is like super pro-gun on, uh, on Twitter and Instagram and all that shit. Like he's shooting all the fucking time. Yeah. It's like, I'd love to have him out. You know. I just, I thought about this last night when I was going to bed. I don't know why. I was like, oh, we're fucking retards. We missed our chance. We had, if we had turned our camera around, it'd be like everyone just scream, Henry Cavill, go to unsubscribe podcast. And we just upload that. Uh, that would have made its rounds on the internet. I was like, Fuck. Next time. Oh, yeah, we can have him on the podcast. Oh, yeah, we always have Henry. His legs it'd be, are broken. It'd be super funny. His legs are broken? Oh. 
It'd be oh, so now, he, now he won't come on the podcast. He <laughs> broke his legs. Also, big shout out to everyone's like, oh, you're taller than I expected. I was like, hey, I can live with that. I think it's because we meme on you for being like two inches shorter. <laughs> I know. I'm like four foot ten to the lore. There's our boy. If only we could get him out. Just maybe get Henry Cavill we out. Need, um, we just, we just need to have go. the audience <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> We yeah, the audience just needs. Yeah, exactly. No, we're still ranked in gaming. We just need to have the audience spread the word that we're the number one Warhammer 40k podcast on the planet because he's a huge Warhammer 40k nerd, and Other he'll come out thinking we're going to talk about that, and then we're just going to get him hammered. Cody's blocking the light. Oh shit! Oh no! Eli's tism. Yeah, but Eli's <laughs> lighting tism was just like Eli just had a unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> he was about to. Was he was like, about to go full account. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just hard cast to Cody bleeding. <laughs> yeah, but I read. Uh, I read the comments on Cody's vlog that he posted about going to the staccato because it showed uh, us after we finished that podcast where me and Zach were rolling in the dining room and stuff, yeah, yeah. and the amount of people that are just like, I can't believe the unsubscribed studios and in the middle of a dining room. <laughs> Oh, 100%. No oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I thought it was like a professional studio. No, it's just a dining room. No. <laughs> this is actually a dining room yeah. table Adapt, in a dining room. Improvise, <laughs> overcome. <laughs> come. Yeah, come. Adapt, improvise, come. We have a kitchen right there. <laughs> we have a, a just living room right there. For all the booze that we drink. <laughs> it's really dope, actually. It's how you set up a proper studio. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's fucking the the best thing that we could have done because anytime our guests stay here, it's a three bedroom house. We just put people up in the bedrooms and they it's easy. Don't have to buy people hotels or anything. Save money in the long, save a lot of money in the long run. Like yeah. in the long run, you're like, Hey, right now we have some boys living with, I, I talked to the neighbor. He said he might be interested in coming on. Yes. Fucking Old Sam? Yeah. Can we say his name? Hello? I don't know why we, couldn't yeah right. sammy we can say sammy sammy, sammy. sammy. the vietnam sammy. veteran next yeah. door he's an old 101st vietnam veteran and uh living next door to a podcast house because he yeah I, th I think we talked about it before though he oh, thought yeah. he thought we were all just drug dealers yeah it's like <laughs> there's so many sense. yeah he's like there's so they're many <laughs> they, they pull up once a month and nice it, cars like <laughs> really expensive cars <laughs> fuck there's cameras all over the house there's cameras there's a lot of packages getting delivered <laughs> <laughs> for a solid two months we were very questionable <laughs> it's uh, completely understandable on his part to like, be bro, honest. but he loves us now we oh, go now we go over we talk to him and bring him booze and he's like wait you're all veterans oh okay okay <laughs> you guys are just good at what you do <laughs> fantastic humans which ufc fighters are coming out we couldn't get strickland but couldn't get strickland we're getting a couple out there i don't want to say names right now because we don't know exactly if they're coming oh. it's just like when you talk to a content creator it's like hey are you coming out and it's like uh it's like 50 50 if they yes, ever actually 50 -50. fucking show up <laughs> yeah i'm gonna try though bro I'm i'll pumped. see you tomorrow buddy doesn't show up. That's like me going to dinner sometimes. <laughs> I'll be right there. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like the the running joke is fucking Eli time. <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. It's like, hey, I'll be at this restaurant at this hour. It's like Eli says, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. It's like, all right, we'll just schedule that an hour behind. <laughs> yep. I'm on the way now. Just got in the car an hour and a half later. It's like he lives eight minutes away. <laughs> I drive the opposite way. <laughs> what are you doing, you autistic fuck? You can only go clockwise around San Antonio. He stopped. There was a <laughs> I had to go up in the bird all the way down and around. I'm like, I'm here. It's a thing. He had to stop and wait for a train. And by wait for a train, I mean chase it because it was cool. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> Up on the track. <laughs> oh shit, I bet if I go to that intersection right now, I could probably cut it off and watch it again. Oh man, this is so fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we God. doing, boys? This is absurd. <laughs> Dude, we're just living yeah. our best lives. It's a good time. <laughs> when are you move? Oh, you got a fucking new vehicle. Yeah, I got a Texas car. <laughs> What? I'm here enough. It made financial sense, believe it or not. It really, I mean, it the, does. The monthly payments are less than I was paying in Ubers and car rentals coming down here for a week a month. So, And it's dope. And it's cool. It's really cool. It's one of the reasons I decided to just flat out move to Texas. A, the COVID shit sucked. But B, the um, just the amount of time I was spending here anyway. 
I was flying. There was one time I spent an entire fucking month in Texas. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, dude, I remember when you were in that weird transition period of yeah. coming out here because you were trying to get the uh, the shop set up. Well, that was way later. This was like I was just spending a fuckload of time down here, whether it was with Demo Ranch. Like I was always yeah. in oh, yeah. San Antonio. Yeah. I was, but I, there was one time I had the, those AK build courses in Texas. Like I literally just drove down here and lived here for a month. <clears throat> like it. And then you finally made the move. Uh, returned to my ancestral home. Oh, I love it. I remember oh. all the, dude, those are the such good times. I was fucking Cody moved out. You were here just living with me for a few weeks. You and yeah. John. Yeah. And then you got your place. I remember shot, like taking you around a house shop or I was just ro rolling with you and you were trying to find a place. Yeah. And then you moving down during the Texas storm. God, the big snow apocalypse. Holy yeah. shit. Now, now, Bro. We, now we need a story from you moving here. Texas drivers are wild. Aggressive. Everything's bigger in Texas, especially your guys' inability to drive in inclement weather. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. It rained yesterday, and the amount of people that didn't know how to drive their car in rain blew my mind. So it's fucking, incredible. Fucking Jay Wolf. That's the same thing that he said when we were coming over here. He's yeah. like, yeah, everyone had their flashers on, and it was just barely raining. That is my number one pet peeve, when people put their fucking hazards on when it's raining. It's like, I'm aware of that, Becky. <laughs> what are you telling me? I've literally never even seen that before. Really? I've never seen anybody turn their flashers on for fucking rain in my entire life. No, that's a thing. That's definitely a thing here in Texas. Uh oh, shit. Fucking wild to me. <laughs> it's a mild storm. I'm going to get in the far left lane and go 20 under <laughs> I'm with only, the hazards on. We all know the left lane is for crime. Oh. I live in a desert. I'm only used to it being between 65 and Dear 75. <laughs> Dude, that's the only time I get fucking <laughs> rages. You, if people in the left lane going fucking the speed limit is the only time I rage. That's you will see like asshole. It would just, I'm like. <clears throat> <clears throat> Have you oh. seen my new shirt? No. God, I'm getting pissed it's, off just thinking about out. people in the left lane. This is coming out on Bunker Branding <laughs> soon. Fucking God. Yes. <laughs> Juice. It's <That's> fucking Juice. <laughs> great. The left lane is for crime, okay? There's fucking it's, signs it's, here in Texas that say, the left lane is for passing only. I will pass people and I make, I like when I, when you make me go like this around you, I'm going to go like this and point at you and flip you off and then go around and get right in front of you and then point at the sign that says this is a fucking only for passing, only for passing. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're going the speed limit in the left lane. The left lane is oh. for fucking as fast as you want to go. And it's your own responsibility if you get pulled over. That's you. That's on you. But if people want to drive faster, get the fuck out of the goddamn way. God. Uh, my thing, I like, I won't just do the like stare down thing. My thing is to guess what they look like by how they drive. Like right out the bat, I'm like, that has to be a fucking it's a 72 year old white man. <laughs> that, or, no, or, or, or it's a fat white woman. Yeah. I love how we like, chose we chose the safe ones. <laughs> yeah. They both wanted to say Asian yellow driver. Bro. Theo Vaughn's bit on that. Did you see that? <laughs> oh, the ch wait, uh, and if that was a ch and if that cheeseburger was Jewish. No, no, it was. Oh. The, it, it was a, I think it was Shane Gillis. Right? <laughs> the Shane Gillis is like no, but he the uh, the it was uh, fucking Theo Vaughn was talking about like in San Francisco. He's like, I'm just gonna you know San Francisco has the highest population of Asian Americans in the country or something like that. And he's like. It's also the first city in the country to have self-driving vehicles. So I'm just going to let you put together why those two <laughs> things are hilarious. <laughs> Speaking of road shit, what was up with the fucking car in Houston? Remember that? We were driving behind. It, was, fucking one it, took, us a, it took us a minute to figure oh out what God. it even was. Yeah. So it was oh. I was like, because you were like, did anyone see that? I was like, Cody, I was asking Bro, the same question. The I, have it on, I have it on camera. I'll, I'll get no, it up on Instagram. It yeah. Oh, I will. Also send it to G-Man. The, the it, one that had like cake mixers out the was, side of the road. It was yeah. fucking, <laughs> it was Dude, pimp, jump. pimp purple. For Minnesota Vikings metallic purple, the entire car, and it had the back tire on it with spoked rims. Like it this was like a, a Malibu. like a 1970s Cadillac. And then it had fucking hubcap extenders that stuck out at least 18 inches, probably two feet on both sides it could yeah. barely fit in the lane hold on but guess what amazing like vehicle expensive car this was 
It took me a second, but because I'm from the Midwest, I recognized it by the taillights. <laughs> what was it? It then? was an early 2000s Grand Dam with fucking thirty thousand dollars worth of work done to it. It was fucking hilarious, bro. I, Jay, like, actually, can we get a real reaction? You got the video? Do you yes, got your phone? I have the, come here, come here, Jay. No, it's, ah, fuck, it's upstairs. Oh, it's damn on my it. camera. Damn I'm sorry. It. Okay, I don't have it. Fuck, because it is fucking ah <laughs> like this, dude. Jake, it was like. When they were driving in front of this us car the was van. nine feet wide. It was insane. <laughs> he was going to the airport. So <laughs> I wish we could have just got pimply ruled. duties to do, I guess. I don't know. I will. I just want. Oh, yeah. He did oh, go you, to were gonna, you were going to oh, say, no, I was going to just say, hey, crime. Oh. <laughs> Stop floating. I wish we could have just ran him off the road and fucking <laughs> killed him for having that car. The commentary in the bus that we were on was hilarious. Bro, we were. Oh, terrorizing. my God. We're in twisted metal. <laughs> we were terrorizing every fucking driver we had. They got tipped well. <laughs> They had to ride along with us. You're basically, well, you're riding in a fucking comedy Oh, group. no. Where is oh, it? Yeah, we got shit-faced in Austin, and then we had the long drive home, and I woke up, and we were at Bucky's. And where's my necklace I bought? Over there. Oh, right. Super oh, right, right there. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Bring that over here. I just, we're in Bucky's. I, I yeah. bought this <laughs> while I was very drunk. the rosary. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot <laughs> about that. We're, <laughs> we're, scre we're screaming at Jake. <laughs> Dude, we got. Oh my god, the ride with Jake. Our lawyer is so mad. <laughs> <laughs> this like, episode is going to bomb. We're doing really good. There's oh two god. options on this. One. <laughs> Our attorney has advised us that we made fun of him the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we, we're just like play, J Jake had the ox chords. We're just like, hey, Jake, play Zach Bryan. You're like, no, Zach Bryan's fucking gay. Like, so we just kept fucking, like, we just kept coming up with new song titles. Hey, Jake, play Fuck Me and My Gay Ass by Zach Bryan. Hey, Jake, 2 Dude 69 by Zach Bryan. Jake, by the end, was like, So not any of these songs, guys. And then I think we, we made the mistake of uh, poking at Dolly Parton, which is apparently a very sensitive <laughs> subject. We, we stepped on sacred territory. Dude, he was just like, oh. <laughs> Jake's just huffing. I, just, I do. I apologize the next right day. Now. I was on. I text Jake. I'm like, I'm sorry for the things I said to you in the name of Zach Bryan. God. Jake got bullied. He's like, this is how it happens. This is high school. That was and my you get quote. four dudes just drunk, and we're just like, this bully our lawyer. <laughs> the, the one. The one fucking person we shouldn't bully. It's like, Jake, could you please play Come in Each Other's Foreskin by Jack? <laughs> 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 smoke like, <laughs> like one of the most wholesome people I know <laughs> now that it's all coming back to me we were kind of assholes to everybody we ran into we love you Jay <laughs> I, just, I remember walking into the it's like 11 when oh, we got no. to the hotel uh, in which Dallas one? we got to the hotel and we checked in like When's the bar open? Four. But we're alcoholics <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we had a rough week. <laughs> Definitely should um, go to any of the live shows. Oh, no. <laughs> we turned into, like, just fucking degenerates. <laughs> party bus, awesome idea by Cody. He was like, we can get a party bus. They'll drive us there and back, and we can drink on it. <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is such a weird juxtaposition of my life, though, right now. Because, like, earlier that day, I had meetings in the Capitol in Austin, like the Capitol of Texas. Did you the, were the taking, like, important political calls right before? Oh, God, in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, I had to, like, sorry, this is a member of Congress. I've got to run real quick. I had to sprint out of the green, green room and take, like, a very intense 15-minute conversation and then come back into a conversation about come. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it was... This is the double life is getting fucking weird. <laughs> we're in a good part. Buddy, we are living the dream. God forbid a normal fucking person gets elected, you know? Oh, fuck. Connor, do you know what the best thing I love bringing with me? What?
Eli, what's the thing you like bringing with you? <laughs> My Raycon Everyday Earbud. They isolate noise so good. Raycons offer amazing quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. Don't believe me? Then believe the tens of thousands five-star reviews. Raycon's optimized gel tips are designed to fit in your ears and stay there. Oh. <laughs> Whether you're using them at the gym while you pump iron like I do aggressively, or use them while you're at the gym watching Eli pump iron. Some of my favorite features are the noise isolation. I love the awareness mode, because when you're built like me, walking home at night can be dangerous. Also, the earbud tap function. On a real note, I actually do use Raycons every day. They sound amazing. They fit comfortably. They never fall out. The audio quality is amazing. I listen to music. I love music. And I love Raycons. Head over to buyraycon.com slash unsub to get 20% off of your order today. 20% off and free shipping. Yeah, now we got just this, a range day, and then rest and relaxation for fucking... For you. 45 seconds. For, we yeah, have for we got a podcast tomorrow. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Why? Well, yeah. That's why I said range day, and then the the last one Friday, and then a fucking. So we have podcast Friday with. We're we doing podcast tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, old man, old, old man gaming, grandpa gaming. Can we talk about that? <clears throat> yeah, grandpa yeah. gaming, dude. dude. I'm super pumped for it. Have you, have you guys seen him, grandpa game, like grandpa gaming? Is yeah. That his name. Grandpa Gaming is he's just sniping motherfuckers in Battlefield like it's nothing. He's like, yeah, this is where you should put your reticle up right here. And he's just <laughs> destroying people. Just deleting he people. He's many mills. Yeah, he's just deleting Chinese kids. <laughs> <laughs> and laughing the entire time, hysterically. So basically what he used to do. <laughs> in Battlefield, the video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll emphasize that part. In a video game, he's deleting Chinese is, kids. Is he a veteran? <laughs> that dude's, yeah, yeah, he's a veteran. Yeah. He's a he's <laughs> retired diver. Yeah. And marksman. So he was a squad, because we talked, he was a squad marksman. That dude's comment section is so funny. Oh, God. It's like, this man doesn't have PTSD. He's got nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> PTSD, it's nostalgia. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. With just a, a reticle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a shirt too. That is the funniest shit I've heard all day. <laughs> Fucking write that down in your little book, uh, of, <laughs> book of dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited for him. He is, his text, I sent it to the group because his first text to, to us was just as simple as, wait, here it is. <clears throat> I said, Gramps, hello, sir. After this uh, flight, we'll ring you back. Truly appreciate uh, you reaching out. The guys are so excited to chat with you. His first response, great. I would like to take my rifle. Also, if the airlines won't, because we invited him down, it was like, love to come down uh, to San Antonio. He's like, also, if the airlines won't let me do it, then I'll drive down in, in my pickup. <laughs> and then you just sent a picture of his rifle. <laughs> yeah, which, what the uh, shit is that? <laughs> Dude, homeboy is ready to <laughs> shoot some rounds i would like to bring this if possible i'm like oh he's gonna get along it we just, don't have any long ranges to justify that thing but go no, ahead no he's dude is, he and you definitely don't want to shoot steel at 100 yards with that fucking thing no. whatever that is no, that's he, like 308 minimum mm -hmm. but he was a dude his <clears> content <throat> he blew i didn't realize how fast he exploded especially a million on instagram which instagram is very hard to climb on mm-hmm and he broke a million really quickly. You gotta be doing like viral reels yeah. for that, yeah. which he does. Like that's why I've seen his his stuff. You just see that old man. He's like, hey, hey, <laughs> just fucking deleting kids, <laughs> clicking, clicking foreheads. I'm like, uh, so super excited for that one. I think he'll really. It'll be interesting because he has he's very much an old man when he talks. It's like that slow cadence, just excited about life in Look general. At him hammered. That's what I'm hoping for. I was like, do you cuss? She was like, well, my streams are, I keep my streams PG because I have a very large uh, audience that is young. But uh, if it's not there, I swear like a sailor. I was like, my brother. Dude, you're going to get along <laughs> great. I don't know what it is about my content. I've, I've always been like blown away by the amount of older people that like my videos. I was at a, I was at the store the other day. It's this like store in Iowa called Batteries and Bulbs where they sell Batteries and bulbs, and uh, wow. I, had to, I had to get you some. I had to get, I had to get a twist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to get like a. This is a fucking. <laughs> <dun, dun. laughs> 
SVU. <laughs> they do like key cutting and car fobs and shit. And I was getting a spare key. M Night Shyamalan <laughs> twist. <laughs> And I'm like waiting in line and there's this old, old guy. I could just tell he's a veteran. I was like, are you in the military? He's like, yeah. Like doing what? He's like, I was a Cav scout in the Korean war. Like, oh, that's dope. And I, I had just done my Sergeant Reckless video. So I start, I knew all kinds of shit about the Korean war. And he's like, yeah, I was in, fuck. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. It's like, uh, P- Poonjang or Tonjang. Uh, it was like literally the village on the fucking demilitarized zone line that got turned from a normal city into like the peace village where it's just where the North and South governments and militaries meet to like exchange prisoners and shit. Jesus. And I explained that to him and he's like, Oh, I had no idea. It was just a normal like village when I was there. And I, I told him the story about Sergeant reckless. And <clears throat> then it, like, I, it was time for me to go. Like I, I got my shit done and he's like, oh, well, write down, write down your name so I can find your videos on the internet. And I was like, just fair warning, like I swear a lot, I make a lot of inappropriate jokes. He's like, son, I've killed 13 people. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> son, I've killed 13. I was like, when you start with son, yeah. like, hey, he's not joking. Yeah. All right, my bad. <laughs> Our boy knew the number, too. God yeah. damn. Son, I've killed 13. I was like, Okay. <laughs> I know how to kill my 19. I know you have never killed a single individual. Son, I've killed 13 men. That you know, you know how you know? You know how you know he's never killed a person? He's talking about it on a fucking Southwest flight. Across the Nile. <laughs> it, it was it made my whole day. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't curse, but I've just slaughtered a lot of men. <laughs> Side note, fucking dope ass shirt, Brandon. Oh yeah, that, that's my new shirt. I haven't pushed at all. Now uh, the we're CIA, pushing said, it now. Uh, CIA uh, Outstanding Journalism Award, <laughs> which is uh, beautiful. If it's you know anything about their history, yeah, the government. Also, what the you can fuck? trust them. This looks like it was. Made. I swear to go. I swear to God, I thought you were going for a boop. Yeah, no, so I was just no, like fine. looking at all this shit. I'm like, dear God, that's actually like old as shit. It heavy. looks weathered. It's heavy. <laughs> Dude, yes. He can hear you. <laughs> Feel it. These look like cocoa pebbles. Is that the. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's hungry. Brandon I, am hungry. Gonna. I just remember coming downstairs the you next morning. You paid $40 for this? <laughs> that's Bucky's prices, baby. <laughs> Dude, Bucky. Tax was, <laughs> I was drunk, <laughs> and it's now a tax write-off, even though it's not Why on my are you couch. Smelling it, dude. Do it. Dude, Sounds my good. entire it comment like section. <laughs> After it. It now sweet. Now my fan base. Oh, it's really does. Oh my god. <laughs> it smells like a cocoa pebble. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, that does smell sweet. It smells like the the Bucky nuggets. Huh. I feel like you guys are gaslighting me into trying to eat it. Until they smell that. You guys are gaslighting me into trying to eat rocks right now. No, it's not. Smell it, Nick. No. Dude, smell your no. fucking thing. No, have you not smelled it? Oh, I've smelled it. Okay. <laughs> I don't like how you said that. Oh, I've smelled it. No, my whole fan base after I did that tax video where I explained the couch in the background isn't my casting couch, it's my tax write off couch. And now, like, my new ad for the Ching Lee video that came out today was uh, Delete Me. And Hannah walks in. As soon, oh, this video is brought to you by Delete Me. And Hannah walks in with an MP5 and goes, I thought you'd never ask, and does the MP5 slap. And yeah, like everybody's whatever, catching on. The, and now, and then when I walk back in, I act like, you know, we go have sex. And then I get the MP5 and I set it on the couch as I walk back in. And it's in the background for the rest of the video. And everybody's like, my boy just turned an MP5 into a tax write off. <laughs> now they know. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. Well, what's funny is that you can buy it <sighs> intending to put it in a video and not. Yep. And it just means you're bad at your job, but it's still write off. <laughs> Trust me, I buy a lot of fucking guns that I just haven't done videos on yet. But there will be in videos. They will Perhaps. be videos. Yeah, and plus they're in the background of shit. Like, you know, they'll either be on my gun wall in the back as a prop, or like we'll be doing shop tours and they're everywhere. But like there are like, seriously, there have got to be at least 20 guns that I bought that I just, I, I want to do a video on eventually, but I just haven't done it yet. So you get around to it. Uh, there's one, you'll, you actually, I'd love to have you in on this one. Yeah. Um, it's a, uh, I think it's a model night. Don't quote me on this. Uh, it's like a FN or a, a FN or Browning model 1910. And I, I want to call it the gun that started World War One because that was the gun that was used to assassinate oh, what's yeah. Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Franz Ferdinand. 
Uh, God, see, my friends are smart. They know the name. I just know the event. No idea the names. Because I know you could go into the sandwich. (laughs) Literally, yeah. I know you could go into the entire history of that for the video and everything. Yeah, I could do that. The botched assassination that I'd have to read up on it. But just the the starting of World War One is insane. (sighs) It was a lot of fucking dominoes. It's a lot of people having their homies' backs for really not great reasons. (laughs) It's literally like that's how most of our bar fights start. <laughs> hey, it's literally the international equivalent of a bar fight. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Hey, that's my friend. Just dog. Hey, pile. that's my friend. Yeah, literally. And then <laughs> four hundred millions thousand? of young men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, millions of deaths yeah. later. It was like oh was fuck yeah, million? never mind ten million. Like, because that was that's trench warfare. That yeah. was like. Hey, you're not. Fi- I'm going to shoot you in the back well, of the head. Trench warfare not- the and brick. the Spanish flu at the same oh. time. You know what makes trench war less fun? Uh-huh. Diarrhea. <laughs> God, I didn't even think about that. So it's true. Oh, that's the worst part. Yeah, like that's fucking horrifying. Can I tell you guys? So 20, 20 million deaths. I love Brandon. We know. He bought me a trench shotgun. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? You can what slam fire it. Yeah, you yeah. actually, you can. You didn't, totally can. Didn't NATO that try again? to say that's not you, a little thing? <laughs> Brandon's like, yeah, you totally can. No, Ger- <laughs> oh, yeah? Germany yeah, tried to have slander. shotguns outlawed as a war crime because <laughs> they were mad at the Marine Corps. <laughs> that's an actual thing. No, that's a real thing, yeah. They yeah. tried to have it declared a war crime, be- and then they were, like, talking shit. Like, oh, yeah, well, using a shotgun and not having to aim at fucking point blank range isn't gentlemanly and it's because you guys aren't good rifle men and the marines were like dope <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> why well, i love it's like you, well, you still allow artillery and mortars so yeah. fuck off yeah you motherfuckers are the ones using mustard gas and you're mad at me because i have a gas mask and a fucking shotgun get the fuck out of here that was <laughs> that first marine that was like pow pow i think he I, held it down he's like Pow. When I shit, when I did the Pat. guys, uh, guys, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. guys, come here, look at this shit. Out. You just yeah. do this. <laughs> do that again. Yeah, that's a, that's a joke I made in the trench sweeper video. <laughs> I was like, the United States military gave a gun to the Marine Corps, whose only limiting factor in how much destruction it can dispense is how quick the Marines can do this. <laughs> 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 what, 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 what's the joke? It's like an eight, an eighteen year old boy from Wisconsin. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that the, the bayonet that came with the thing's a fucking sword. Yeah. it's like this long. It's enough to go completely through a well, normal sized human. Because that's also like in the 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 weird transitionary phase between like you think of like a, a Vietnam. Uh, bayonet right you think about like a nor like yeah. a k-bar kind like of a shit. knife yeah what but like right before grow? that was the fucking two foot civil war tri-blade shit Spears. so like you're in like the transitionary phase where it's flat but it's still you know i could scratch eli's forehead from here <laughs> yeah you could scratch the back of my noggin from there <laughs> from the inside <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh fuck uh shout out to what's his name knives microtech Oh, the microtech guy. Uh, I know his name. I don't know if you want me to say his actual name on the podcast. Probably not. Uh, shout out to... We, we had a gentleman that's going to be called the biggest collector of microtech knives uh, in the country, is what he told me. And he showed up, and he's like, I hand-selected a different microtech knife for all of you guys. And gave and he gave each of us a uh, microtech ultratech. So I have the, I think this one's called the Warmonger or the Warhound Blade. Gosh. Cody has the Donut Limited Edition Ultra Tech. Dude, Brandon I has tr- the, truly, I have to bro. Yours is a new one. I hadn't even seen it before. He said it was a brand new knife sh- blade shape that just came out. It was dope as shit. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, it, it has like a bottle opener on the back, like a curve for a bottle opener. Yeah, and it, it was, was like, it was kind of neat. It was like, was it double edged on half the back side? I think so. I'd have to check again. Uh, yeah, I took it home, and then my uh, my girl immediately stole it. So <laughs> she's like, "Wow, I always I always wanted a knife like this with the assisted opening." I'm like, "Me too." <laughs> <laughs> it's yours now. Mm. These are dope, dude. Yeah, giant shout out to him for. Yeah, thanks, buddy. You got. I got the the twin flames because he was like, this is for Sav and you. That's cool. And it was two of them with that heart thing 
Um, it was like a heart shaped throwing star, is what I thought it was. What? It, well, it has a, a literally yeah. cut out metal heart that you can take out and has like the description of the blades. It's like the twin flames, two knives uh, indicating love, serial number, blah, and then two black knives with red uh, in it, uh, laser engraved hearts throughout it. And then like that. You're fucking no. badass. I was like, babe, those are very sharp. Like, and microtechs are <coughs> extremely fucking sharp. Like, yeah, their yeah. social media team. <coughs> I don't want to talk about them, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the donut knife. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what? I don't know about that. You don't know the story? No. Oh. Yeah, can we, do we skip it? We probably, I mean, we, we can probably talk about it. We can talk about it. He, does that guy work at microtech? Uh, he's like really good friends with all of them. And also the, uh, the gentleman that designs blades for Microtech. Well, he's coming. The Microtech guy is coming to Range Day. Oh, fuck yeah. So he's coming. He was going to invite um, <clears throat> Sebastian Bork, Borka, yeah. who Which is the guy name is. Who's, 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 who is good friends with Brandon. What? Wait, yeah. you know Borka? No, 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 no. He's friends with Sebastian Gorka. Gorka. Who was oh, okay. like the speaker? Yeah, no, different guy. This Balashnikov, guy, Kalashnikov. <laughs> yeah, Balashnikov, <laughs> Kalashnikov. Uh, no, but he designs all the blades um, for Mike. Not all of them. It's Marfione and him that design blades for Microtech. So that guy was gonna come out too, but he was busy, so he couldn't. But yeah, but. But shout out know. to you for fucking those dope ass blades. We won't shit on Microtech. No. Okay. If he's coming out, he's friends with Cody's him. just mad yeah. that he couldn't find a donut Cerakoted one immediately. No, I tried to buy one. it from them. I didn't. I, I didn't ask for it for free. I was no. just like, "Hey guys, could I buy this knife from you? I will pay full retail price. Could I buy it?" And they're like, "No, we don't do that." I was like, "Ah, oh, god damn it, dude!" But it's a donut. It's a fucking literal donut knife. I will buy it. Then they sent a, fin- Dude, a you picture had to of have them it. just doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, God <laughs> damn it. I wouldn't even be mad that I'm like, damn, that social media team's baller and shit. <laughs> that, finding that knife consumed you for like 48 hours. Until yeah, you, you helped one me down. out. I had it. to track one down on like a second party like scalper website to get it to him. And I think you paid like literally double the yeah, retail price. I paid price double to for get that one. motherfucker. Yeah. And then you were caught, you gave it to just, yeah. So after we can cut that out, if you don't want, you tell us, no, that's fine. No, after our first podcast we did in, uh, here in San Antonio, I was in the bathroom and the kid that was cleaning the bathroom, I say kid, he, he was yeah. of legal age to own this knife. Yeah. 12. He was like, Hey man, I, I saw that you were, he was, dude, he was only 11. It's fine. <laughs> But no, he he was the nicest dude ever. I come in, he was like, dude, I saw that you were nervous, and but you guys killed this show. This was awesome. And he's in there cleaning the bathroom, and I felt bad because he was he fucking he was already spraying down the toilets, and I took a piss. Like, <laughs> but he was like, this is awesome, man. And I was like, all right, this this awesome dude gave me this knife. Um, would you like mine? Because it was this, it was the same one. It was the same the same Microtech. And so I gave him my fucking six hundred dollar knife. I just, so I'm playing the fucking I'm, in my yeah. head. I'm just doing. The, I'm building a commercial. It's the NFL commercial where it's like that little four year old green. <laughs> and then it doesn't look back, and it's a four year old gives him a thumbs like, "Hey kid, oh, you no. open the blade and toss it to him. Yeah. Sticks like, right oh. through the head. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Donut Operator." <laughs> Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Fucking, that, that was bringing me back to like at one point I, I bought like an actual switchblade, which at the time in the state was not legal. I don't think I was like 15, and this guy, like sketchy dude at like a gun show, was just like, "Hey kid, you <laughs> do you want a pearl handled switchblade and a copy of the Anarchist Cookbook?" I'm dead fucking serious. I bought both from the same fucking what? guy. I'm oh. dead. The the early fucking edition, the 1970s, oh like fucking William, God. whatever. Oh, yeah. Explain what the anarchist cookbook is. I don't think I will. Okay. You can Google it at home. (laughs) Or, like, don't. Well, I will tell you now, all the copies that are available now, like the the new ones, they've all changed the recipes. It's like... Oh, it's the watered-down versions? Yeah, it's all, like... There's there's different things about, like, different drugs you can make, different, like... A lot of it's, like, bombs and, like, homemade weaponry and, like, black powder and shit like that. But, like, they've changed all the recipes since then. So, like, obviously, if kids get a hold of it, they're not just, like... You know, smoking banana peels and fucking blowing up homemade Semtex in their backyard. 
Thank God. Napalm. Huh. Well, Napalm ain't that fucking No, I know. Hard, to be <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that's like the free space in bingo. <laughs> Bro, I, <laughs> I did, I, I did, a, I did all this shit when I was like fifteen, dude. Oh yeah, dude, all I was this did. I, I had no interest in drugs at all when I was a kid. It was just like it was all just like weird. Oh, you can make C four at home in an oven with shit you can buy off of Amazon with a pre, or eBay with a prepaid gift card. Oh my god! As you showed on YouTube for your first strike, it wasn't a. It, it was wasn't not my first, first strike. strike. <laughs> B, B. It was it was gunpowder. It was black powder. It wasn't C four. I would never do that. You can, you can do it, though. <laughs> I'll do it again. <laughs> I, I I, trust me, I know. <laughs> the fucking crazy story is running into one of the, the guys that worked at the San Antonio Club was Osborne, who I deployed with. Oh, yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, the security guy. Dude. We never talked about that, oh, that on stage. God. I forgot about this. Bro, that was Osborne. <laughs> Shout out. What's up, bud? Dude, that was a wild experiment. I, I haven't seen this dude. I've been out for almost two Decades. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. 15 years I've been out. Jesus. So I haven't seen Osborne in 15 years. I walk up. He's like, hey, man, what's up? I was like, hi. And we were just talking to the entire, uh, all the staff. We had, the staff, we'd always take care of them. They were, and they took care of us. So it was fucking amazing, amazing people. And he's like, hey, it was like, what's up? What's up? He's like, hey, man, what's up? Hey, long time no see. He's like, long time no see. Fucking hug. Boom. And then walking back. Wearing out in the green room, and he's like, Eli, you don't remember me. I was like, ah, da, da, da. holy shit, fucking Osborne. You're, you had that, you handled the fucking cut off head and got put in the Rolling Stones magazine. <laughs> he's like, hey, you remembered. Oh, yeah. I was like, hey, Osborne. Yeah. A quick military yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. When this was the breadbasket, this is the bad. Military stories don't do well on this podcast. None, <laughs> of, our, none of our viewers <laughs> like that. He's fucking bomb. Always. <laughs> yeah, no guess. <laughs> <laughs> fucking breadbasket, the terrible area. This is like the last push in Moctadilla. And we are on month 14 of 15 out of this deployment. God damn, 14 month deployment? 16 to total. For, yeah. So we're at month four. I, I was, uh, not QRF, I forget um, what it's called when you go in first by an extra two weeks. So I was there first. So I technically did a 16 month deployment. Now, we're about to do the bread, bas bread basket push. Thank fucking God for one time. They're like, uh, let's let's let the new people replacing you do this last push. Now, before that, there was a bridge that separated uh, Moctadilla from the bread basket area, which is like where all the bad guys went after we killed all the other bad guys. They're on this bridge, those Hesco barriers. And they got the call. It's like, hey, there's a head on a Hesco barrier. You guys got to go go pick it up. Go police up that head. Go grab that head. Yeah. <laughs> so Osborne was the one. They're like, and then Rolling Stones is out. Go get some time. head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is the first time oh, I learned oh. how media works. I was like, oh, wow. So, so hold on. Just to work clear. He's literally like cleaning up a site is all he's doing. Yeah, he is. He's getting sent out to clean up. The post remnants of battle. Yeah. Okay. This is first. I want to say it was first platoon. <clears throat> first platoon was tasked to go to the bridge. And then they were like, Osborne, go get the head. <laughs> it was just a head on a Hesco barrier to say, don't come in here. It was like, a, so it was put, put there to make a point. Yeah. And it was like an Iraqi Sergeant Major or something like and, that. And, and Osborne is just like a young kid at the time. Yeah. Like literally low guy on the totem pole. Yeah. He's an E4. <clears throat> so yeah. Fucking 20 year old kid. Yeah. Maybe time magazines like, Oh, uh, like they're out on the mission with us. Cause it was like extra secure. And he goes, grabs a head. I think he said he dropped it. So he bent down, picked it up. It was like, like that, which I mean, fair. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> 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 head. <laughs> so he picks it up and they're like, Oh, you have to like uh, turn towards the camera. He's like, Oh, and they're like, no, make a face. So he's like, eh. <laughs> it's just telling you. It's just telling you, kid. Oh, no. like, like, you're like, eh? Like, if someone says smile for the camera, you're going to be like, eh. Yeah, this, this is a 19, 20 year old kid, maybe. Who's actively developing PTSD to yeah. some degree who, at who, this moment. Who has been in war fighting for months. Yeah. And they're like, go police that head. A year at this point. <laughs> 
<laughs> like we've done war. So like our emotions are very done at this point. And we're not around, used to being around cameras. This is like one of the first times we're actually like a camera crew, especially Rolling Stones is with us. So they're like, boom, 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 boom. they took some photos. We didn't know any of this. We found out when he got demoted and the Time Magazine, or the Rolling Stones article came out. And then we were sent it. And Osborne like this, holding a head. <laughs> You're telling me that media and journalists don't tell the fucking truth? Wow. What? That's so That's crazy. crazy. I'm, glad that, like, I'm glad we solved that problem. Bro, and it said like in the article, he got demoted. Like he got fucking torn up for this. And it was bullshit. And it, all it said was like soldier laughs and plays with dead man's head or something like that. Like... You can Google this. If, if you're you a do, journalist, I'm glad your entire industry's dying and you deserve this because at this point you guys are nothing but shitty influencers and you're not even good at your job. Yeah. You're Go being fuck replaced yourself. by us. Yeah. If you could do anything, guys out there, bully journalists. Although the guys who wrote the good articles about me, you're all right. You're all right. <laughs> if you're a good journalist, keep, if you're not a lying piece of shit. No, fuck I'm sorry. The, I'm, fuck I'm the sorry. Daily Beast. <laughs> bully journalists at any point you can. Bully all of them. <laughs> They're all like, except the ones I like, except the ones I follow on Twitter. I mean, it's the only reason I started my YouTube channel, man. Yeah. To bully journalists because you're all fucking liars. And for the most part, that's the first time we say, and this is 2008. So you don't have to apologize. I got to watch it firsthand. Watch a dude get busted down in rank. He went from like an E4 to an E1. If I remember right. Jesus. Like they fucking took me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was instant. Like boom, busted in rank. He's in because he was in the Rolling Stones and you can Google it. If you like, it's like two just fucking soldier holds head bread basket or something like that. It's going to pop up. Osborne, phenomenal human didn't deserve that. And again, we had been doing war up to this point for almost 14 fucking months. We were desensitized to all that shit. And when you're like, smile, I don't fucking know. <laughs> you're not going to be like, why am I smiling? I'm holding a head. Huh. What Rolling Stone? Rolling Stone, you're 20. You don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, you're some like, asshole with a camera is like, smile. <laughs> and I then, haven't been doing war for 14 months. Click, but boom, ruined dude's career if he stayed in. Like, would have fucked him over. But got his number. And thankfully, I got to reconnect with that dude. He's like, dude, we need to grab a drink. Got his number. I was like, fuck yeah, dude. It's fucking so, rad. That was an actual cool event. These guys got to see how surprised I was. Now I'm just mad about journalism. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I tried to look for it, and I've just found, like, a bunch of different photos of decapitated heads and shit, so that's, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> you guys talk for a second. The, the and nightmare brick failed. <laughs> but, no, well, it, that, that shows the problem with journalism nowadays because, like, it has changed significantly. Of, well, I mean, it's the same shit, but it's just a different era. Because back then, they were just trying to sell magazines. They were trying to sell whatever the fuck they can. Nowadays, in the, in the age of the internet, they're just trying to sell clicks. Yeah. Because the clicks and, and the ads that are on the sides is what pays their fucking bills. So they don't care about telling the truth. They care about getting you to click on a fucking headline. Yep. Yep. That's why I said they're nothing but shitty influencers. Yep, yep. It's, it's all clickbait. It's all clickbait. No substance. What are we doing, Nick? Just if doing you, it better. If you think my fucking, if you think our like clickbaity ish titles are bad, you should actually read their articles after their fucking headlines. It's the most out of context. Well, I mean, what was the uh, what was the recent Tony Gonzalez ad? What's your favorite state, Brandon? Oh my <laughs> god, that was fucking hilarious. So, Holy so Tony, shit. Tony clipped, and G Man <clears throat> now has to put his, you know, fucking. <laughs> Sorry. Oh god. <laughs> oh no, bro! Because they were like, "Do that." He's like, uh. <laughs> "Yeah." Jesus. Oh, at least he's wearing his gloves. Yeah, PSI. Because he didn't know. He, they were like, just like he's like, they're like pose with it, and they're like smile. And you can tell by his hands, this is the most awkward force picture I've ever looked you at look my his entire he's just life. Like this. And that's I. I've never held a human head like that before, so I. I don't. I just don't think I would do it like that. And then that's my dot climb filter. <laughs> I know that's my voice. Wow. <laughs> Eli Ward. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But no, we, talking about the, the I new Tony. What I what? Went no, good. <laughs> talking about the new the new uh the new Tony attack. About the, the California bit. Like that was so fucking funny. He what? literally clipped me because we were making a joke about how shitty California is, how much we all fucking hate California. We're like, oh, but we like the weather. Because objectively, like, California weather's fucking great. Like, the beaches and everything, very nice. And I made a joke about how, like, oh, yeah, well, California, this is a joke. 
Gee, man, my favorite put up text state. right now. My favorite state in the country. If everybody who if everybody who lived there didn't, and he literally clipped that two seconds or just California is my favorite. It, like it, I I was blown away because I literally watched that episode on the plane, just kind of watching back and like seeing how it landed, and thinking like that would be really funny if Tony fucking clipped that. Like, there's no way, and he fucking did it, dude. It, that's like the. Literally, yeah, what, just who, like, I think everybody in my voting demographic is fucking stupid, and I'm going to take advantage of it right now, is all that was. Hey, wait, wait, they just clipped <clears throat> it. Everybody in my fucking <laughs> voting... <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, put Brandon's face on my head right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what, what fucking absolute retard do you have working for your fucking social media, dude? I can't wait till some dude writes it. I'm a huge Brandon fan, and that's why I was running his campaign into the ground on purpose. I <laughs> Oh, there's a new one? New Tony? Oh, new, new Tony, Tony just, just dropped. dropped. New Tony dropped? Dude, that new Tony fire just what dropped? Oh my Yo, what's that fucking fire album? Re read it, Brandon. East Coaster Brandon Herrera is a little lost. What? Who fucking does this they shit? North <laughs> Who's Wait, still El Paso, Fort Stockton, Eagle Pass, San Antonio. What? There's a map of... Showing how far away all the cities are from that is the hey, oh, oh, and the new thing that we found, <laughs> and I won't talk about that. that is yet. the worst. Oh, is that for me in the community in notes? Life, probably. Ha ha ha. I wonder who spread well, that we around. We can't say that. What we probably shouldn't say that you're in the community notes. Oh, I already have. Oh, have you? Oh, oh I've already had everybody I knows. Care. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm in the community notes, and it's my new life mission oh. to make sure that everybody knows that his name is Ernest Anthony Gonzalez II, aka Tony Gonzalez. And he was registered to vote in the state of Florida as early as 2016. And you can go to the Florida State Registry and verify that for yourself. <laughs> but apparently, he's not qualified because he was registered to vote in North Carolina. Yeah. Wah, wah. Ernest goes to Washington. Ernest, Ernest, do stupid. Ernest doesn't get to go to DC well, anymore. Not allowed to move. You have to be born here. Dude, the only way politic works. God. I, and oh, is, <laughs> my, 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 my favorite way. part, though, is like how he kept shitting on me. He's like, uh, Brandon Herrera says East Coasters help build Texas. I'm like, that's objectively fucking true. Sam Houston, the first and third president of Texas, fucking born in Virginia. Davy Crockett, born in Tennessee. The guy who fucking commanded the Alamo was a fucking East Coaster. Dude. Are you fucking kidding me? Texas was founded by Texans, even though Texans <laughs> didn't exist until after Texas was founded. Therefore, that's logically fucking impossible. Dude, when Captain America was born here in America <laughs> and just put up that flag and was like, it's America now. <laughs> it's the only time that's ever happened. You're like, you fucking God, I hate. Ooh, I guess it's, I don't know how you deal with anything. Just watching how bad and then how like they just manipulate each little thing. I'm like, this is why I don't do fucking politics in the slightest form. It's hilarious having somebody spend a million and a half dollars slandering you. This is where your fucking money went. If you donated that dude one bit like hundreds of thousands of dollars went to write that retarded ass tweet. You know, you know, you know what the funniest thing about this is too though? <laughs> If, You're if, if Brandon that. somehow loses, we're going to go back to doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. You, uh, <laughs> Forever. If you beat me, you don't, get, you don't get to walk away from this. You got two you more years yeah. of this shit, dude. Now we're just going to your rallies. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to open up a can of Alex Stein on him. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, just Fuck be like, it. I'm making a community note right now. <laughs> Tony uh, Gonzalez eats corn the long way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is what's funny. This is what happens when you fight an internet candidate, an internet savvy candidate, and you don't know how to do the internet. I would have told, like, my favorite comment, I think you said it before, is it's like one of the top comments. I think the dude that runs the channel hates Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and it's his own team. I just recently said, like, when we were on the flight back, I'm like, I hope. Tony gets his money. I genuinely hope he gets his money back from whatever firm is running his Twitter account. Cause Jesus Christ. After one, I would be like, bro, like, like fucking, mm, let's just not, let's actually be nice to Brandon. Let's see how that goes. I really I'm trying that. to dopamine, like the, the dopamine mouse in the maze kind of shit, like pressing the button sort of thing. It's like, I'm not going to ratio him into the dirt if he doesn't try to attack me. But every time he does, it's like, no, I'm going to make your life very well, difficult. Well, the most annoying part to me is the fact that he has like his official, his official Twitter, which has a silver check mark because he's a politician. Yeah. And then he has another Twitter that's verified in blue, but that's Team Tony. And the Team Tony one that isn't actually him, but paid by him 
is the one that only slanders Brandon. And then his other one is just like positive and neutral about everything. Well, he changed the name of it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So he has two Twitters now, one just for slandering you. It It'd was be, Tony Gonzalez, and then he changed it to Team Tony when he decided to dedicate it fucking, to slandering me. It'd be a fucking shame if somebody that was good at the internet made a Team Brandon Twitter. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Uh, that'd be weird. It'd suck, man. Homelander running it with fucking Homelander 2. <laughs> 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 Let's light this candle. <laughs> Let's fucking light this candle. Mm, who can talk better shit? Me or Tony's intern? <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> buddy, I, I want to do a GoFundMe for whoever is running Tony's Twitter for fucking psychiatry bills. Just it's fucking be therapy. Bad. I just like politicians learning I, new things. I fucking I don't. We don't do pol and I glad it's. We're not even talking about politics because there's nothing. It's just about bullying politicians <laughs> that I'm so happy with. I'm like, hey, I can live with it. Look, corrupt politicians <laughs> who make shitty votes deserve to be bullied a little. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Which is, I, I, this that's is, bipartisan. Oh, it's so good. It's such a wonderful time in human history where like a bunch of veterans who have been, I don't know, I don't want to say wronged, but like you know, treated shittily before. They've been wronged. Yeah, 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 we we, yeah, we we get to get together on the internet and just bully the politicians that fucked us all up. I just want to know when they type that first one. Like, <laughs> watch this, guys. I'm going to fucking own Brandon. <laughs> and then me and you <laughs> and Nick <laughs> and Brandon are like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck did you say? That, that fucking Dude. meme of like, I'm going to send this tweet. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of comments. <laughs> 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 the funniest one I saw was he posted an, it, it was I saw it like the second it got it was up for like seconds and the first comment was somebody with a fucking meme of Ned Stark you know the winter is coming meme but it had fucking Cody on it it said donut, donut is coming <laughs> I, I joked about that on the live show. It's like if you play Hell Divers, like Cody's like my stratagem on Twitter. I was like, oh wow, shit. Tony posted. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Cody land. <laughs> Hi, <Fist> everyone. <laughs> the 11th most influential man on Twitter. Has arrived. Oh my God. And all this could have avo been avoided just by voting like an actual conservative. Who'd have thunk it? I would have just been nice to you if I was like your opponent. I'm like, let's look at their strengths, the internet. Mm. Okay, we're not fucking with that one. Let's be kind to them. Let's praise them and just let's win everyone with kindness. Kill them with kindness. He could chose it, violence and he chose violence against the wrong fucking community. Oh, could it could have just literally met with me and said, hey, I fucked up in the past. I voted wrong. Here's my, here's my promise for you. I'm going to vote this way from now on. And I probably would have considered it. I probably would have, like, I would have backed down. Instead, you chose Let's to try to bully Brandon on the internet. Let's go fuck with sharks and water. You it's fucked a great up. Idea. Let's go. And let's you really, fucked up. And really, the first one, let's do it when uh, he's he's making it when on a fucking episode where we just left a veteran sewer slide panel let's let's double down on that one. with all the work that we've done for veteran charities and all of our fucking history like most of the people at that table are fucking veterans all the shit we did like that's really where you want to attack yeah. us so you one time it? i was like oh oh eli hung <laughs> like eli hate <laughs> i was like Dude. okay I, i'm not a fan anymore yeah remain neutral right up until you fuck with my boy on that show i'm like oh my god brandon herrera bullied donald trump's minor son when he said and i quote he is pretty tall. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the funniest shit. Like, Bro, really? That's a bull thing to you? <laughs> I wish I was that tall, dude. <laughs> the worst I would say is just he was a cryptid. Like, and that was me, Canyon. I didn't say any of that shit. You were like, yeah, he's kind of tall. And I, love, I quote, I love Cody at, at fucking breakfast this morning, looking at the picture of the new Tony tweet at the time where he's in his, <laughs> his white uniform. And you're like, Oh, we would have bullied this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Another Navy vet. Uh, <coughs> sorry, hell. master chief. You fucking <laughs> I can just, dude, I can just tell he was the type of fucking like the type of person that everyone hated around him while he was in the military. Yeah, that's what you, everyone knows one of those guys. When you have that in the military, it is one of those dudes. It's like, fuck it. I, I can name quite a few. Yeah, you're just like, oh, you're sorry, sorry, H, that's not giving 
his, I thankfully he was my sergeant. He was one of one of my buddy's sergeants, and that dude was just hated. He was the one I think I told the story when he went to breach a house. Dumbass, I used the shotgun, got two, or did, he pulled back, so one of the rounds just barely ricocheted, mm. and it hit him in the leg, and he like fell to the ground. He's like, ah, oh, I've been hit, oh, I've been hit, and then Doc runs up to check him. He's like. Don't save the morphine some for someone else, Doc. And Doc looked at him. He's like, "Yeah, I wasn't gonna use it." <laughs> it's a fucking grace. You're fine. Get the fuck it, it, up, it Doc. Didn't break the pants. <laughs> yeah, it was like barely nothing. Oh, mm. he was the sergeant that made everyone his only his only his squad would have to stay from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. every day in the day room and read military manuals. God, yeah, that Every guy. That guy. Fucking That's day. the yeah, that guy. Yeah. And we no one else in the entire company other than him. And he was like, cause I want my soldiers squared away. Also, because you don't want to go home because you have no fucking friends <laughs> or a wife or anyone in your life. He should run for Congress. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> that dude. But those that's that's Tony in a fight. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the uh, that's the type of duty he is. And re- well, realistically, and that's the one thing I will never talk shit about. I'll never talk shit about Tony's military service. I like, will. I, you know, I, I I respect that. It's like you respect the rank. You know, that's that's one of those like he he, he did serve his country. However, his votes are what I have the fucking problem with, and that's the only place I've ever attacked him. Genuinely, I've never paid to attack him anywhere except for the bad votes he's made, and that's that's the way politics should be. You like didn't you, you didn't touch. Foot in combat, and you sent troops to more combat. Go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. Yeah, I'll attack him. <laughs> fuck you, dude. <laughs> it's like, I got your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, me and Eli and Nichols are going to attack you all day long, yeah, you yeah. fucking asshole. You didn't do war, and then you send people to war? Go fuck yourself. Oh, no. I, I tried to take the high road, and then the veterans at the table disagreed. <laughs> no. Oh, the, the, the next article is going to be like, Brandon's friends don't like you can, me. You can hmm. keep your rules of engagement. We're playing a different game. <laughs> <laughs> they had cell phones. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, my consultant's going to be really happy with this episode. We didn't really talk politics at all. And then that last 20 minutes, we went fucking no. hard. I will, I will see you gentlemen in the fucking headline. <laughs> um, I'll see you in the capital. Full democracy. Uh, full democracy. <laughs> <laughs> just held on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll see you in the mailer. Hopefully I have a bigger cowboy hat this time. Man. Oh, what are we? no cattle. Brandon Fucking Herrera. demo roasted you on the podcast earlier. Oh, no. Oh, dude, he Appar- apparently, uh, I don't know if it was the county or the city had like some longhorns that they didn't want anymore. And they're like, hey, you have all this land. Do you want these five longhorns? And he's like, yeah, I'll take them. And he's like, yeah, unlike Brandon, I'm not all hat, no cattle. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ball cap and some cattle. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> some ball cap and or, yeah. all ball cap and some cattle. <laughs> <laughs> I need to fucking I we, that's what we we said we need to do like especially now that uh, he's got those longhorns I want to go out there with the cartoonishly big like fucking turd the, the Ferguson turd hat. Is in the foam hat it's like fuck you yeah. do that with you riding a fucking longhorn is the best photo in the goddamn world or you're walking it with the fucking the sun setting behind you but turd Ferguson is <laughs> walking. <laughs> I will Gallagher. I have an idea. Yeah. Oh, those photos. (laughs) Oh my God. You send those mellers out. Just. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All hat, all cattle. Yep. Oh fuck yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm fucking in heaven right now. They they don't know how to fight a guy who knows self-deprecating humor. (laughs) And it's hilarious. Like Eminem from Eight Mile. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's nothing you can say that's gonna hurt me. Yeah, I put everything I've on the internet. Said it. <laughs> that's why I love the thing. They're like, he doesn't even live in Texas. Like, motherfucker, I put my entire life online. Like, I have years backlogging me moving to Texas. Why I did it and why I'm here, and when I did it. Oh God. <sighs> I think on that note, we're at hour Doing forty. It. Yeah, fucking Cody. That was, yeah, dude. We gotta play catch up. We got to chat. We got to just hang out. We barely do these. <laughs> yeah, just just the boys. Just the boys just get a hang catching up for a little bit because they are harder episodes because we spend all the yeah. time with each other. 
and we get all our chatting out throughout the day. And it's like, now sit right, down and have that exact same conversation over and over and over. You're like, what? I forget. Okay, let's talk about the fucking the live shows, and then we're good. Thank you guys for coming to the Unsubscribe Podcast. I am joined today by Eli Double Fap, the fat electrician, Brandon Herrera, and myself, Donut Operator. Thank you so much. Check out the Patreon at the end of this because there's going to be about 10 more minutes of content. Huh? Love you guys. Black Bang out. I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers and Patreon. Mama.